promise his grace and his blessing now and ever and today each small age. Amen. Uh, I wanted to speak with you about the gospel today. The gospel is the, today is the fifth Sunday uh, of the Holy 50 Days. And actually, this Sunday prepares us for next Sunday and the following, which is about the Holy Spirit. As you know, in the Holy uh, 50 Days, uh, the 40 days the Lord was with his disciples. And then uh, he, uh, after his ascension, which we celebrate on uh, this Thursday, uh, then he spoke to the disciples and he told them to prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, these, uh, this gospel, as well as almost the rest of the days, uh, are how to prepare for this gift. This gift is one of the most precious for all of humanity. Um, that St. Cyril of Alexandria speaks about the Holy Spirit as linked with our creation. So if we take the creation, he said God breathed into Adam uh, and he breathed uh, to him and made him a living spirit or a living soul. And we understand it in the same time also that this is the work also of the Holy Spirit uh, that was given to us. But after sin, entered in, into the world and they had a separation from God, they lost uh, the Holy Spirit. They still had life, but it was not the fullness of life. Uh, and so always the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, on us is a link to the creation. <laughs> um, but we said that the Holy Spirit, the first thing is how to listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, so we pray for discernment so that what we hear is the Holy Spirit and that we are so that we can respond to the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, St. Anthony has many letters that he wrote to his disciples. And I think you had a study in your church about some of these uh, letters. I don't know if you finished them or if you're in the middle, but many times he will speak about how to have the spirit of discernment how that we pray for the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can live our life properly. Um, and you'll notice that the readings, um, that how even when you want to focus on how to listen to the Holy Spirit, there are some golden chapters that help us to focus on this. So especially in the Gospel of John, as you heard the Gospel today in chapter 14, uh, we will also have chapter 15, which we will hear during this week, chapter 16 and chapter 20. And in the next two weeks that you, you will look in the daily readings. The Holy Spirit to work within us. Um, of course, there are many prayers uh, in the church, especially during the prostration prayers uh, on the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, the second thing is not just to listen to the Holy Spirit, but how to speak with the Holy Spirit. We pray for many things, uh, but also how that we have the Word of God and the life-giving Word of God. Of course, even we can think, you know, giving a sermon, we're always praying also for this, that we will speak with the Spirit of God and not with only our own words. And there are many of the fathers who did this, like St. Ambrose, uh, or St. Hilary, who was you know, a bishop in France, that he said like, uh, to the Lord in one of his prayers, he said, make me like the, the sails of the boat, then fill it with your wind, so that if, if I'm like this piece of uh, cloth that's just standing in the wind, but because of where I am, if people need to move and to hear your voice, so you fill it with your spirit, because the word spirit and wind is the same in the Greek. You, you fill me with your spirit, and then the boat of the church can move. Just the same for any parent, for any person at work, for any person in school, uh, for anyone dealing with even strangers, that we pray always that our words are life-giving. And this is the fulfillment of a prophecy that God told Isaiah, uh, in chapter 59, he says, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. So he says, my promise, my covenant with my people, that my spirit 
his, who is upon you, and my words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart from your mouth, nor shall the mouth of your descendants, nor, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. God chose certain prophets in the Old Testament to speak the word of God. But there's a big difference between how the Holy Spirit was speaking and working in the Old Testament than in the New Testament and today. That he didn't pick one person to speak. But all of the people of God, the chosen people of God, they're full of the Spirit and can speak. That's why it's not just one person who say, okay, uh, I say, I am the bishop, I am the priest, I have the, the Holy Spirit, and you must listen to what I say. Even when we're getting spiritual direction, that if you look in the book of Acts, when they were in chapter 15, when they're trying to figure out what to do, what, how to make this decision, the, the church gathered, the apostles gathered, and they heard the word of God through this unity. And so even if I'm coming to make a decision, or when we take, make a decision, say, for the churches during this time, or what to do for our family, or how to make this decision in my life, uh, even if it's for me, that, that we look and work to see how the, the people of God, full of the Holy Spirit, can help make this uh, decision. And so this is very important that I am speaking with, a, with the Holy Spirit and uh, how to see the response. So I shouldn't get frustrated if people don't hear my voice. Sometimes we want to have this uh, feeling, I told them what to do and they didn't listen. Uh, and this is, uh, they treated me like the prophets <laughs> and persecute me, which could be true. But the thing is when I pray and I'm speaking with the voice of God, I also pray that the people who are listening that they will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and their heart is open and ready to receive the words of God. And that if I am not speaking truly or there's anything that I am preventing the work of God to produce fruit in the hearts of the people, then I pray that that be removed. The third thing is if I listen with the Holy Spirit, I speak with the Holy Spirit, but how to work and to uh, labor and every act that I have is also full of the Spirit. So this is a relationship. It's not just something magical. And it needs time and prayer and to go deep in life with God to reach this point. Like say, for example, I was very happy today, even after uh, the liturgy, we were sitting with, with the bishops and we were speaking and this subject came up. So of course I took notes and half of this is from Ambas Rapian and from the others. <laughs> so uh, to add to my weakness. Uh, but so they were saying even St. John the Baptist, when he is in the womb and he's full of the Holy Spirit, he doesn't even, he's not fully formed <laughs> yet. And yet he could leap uh, uh, and express his joy in uh, the, the Messiah. This is the work of God that even is not just out of emotion. Some people may imagine that, yeah, to be moved by the Holy Spirit is an emotional thing. And I said this and I did this and uh, it doesn't even have to make sense. But no, there's logic and reason and emotion, but the Holy Spirit is what's guiding it. That's why one of the, the powerful um, balances to understand whether or not I am working and, and making and deciding things or, or acting in my life through the Holy Spirit, also that re the reception or how that even those in the church, whether it be the priest or people in my family or others, how they respond also with the spirit of uh, love and of peace and of joy, that it brings forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I wish we focus in this coming time on prayers for the Holy Spirit. I mentioned like St. Anthony his, in his letters, he has many uh, prayers and is focused on this. And he will say uh, in, I think, fifth letter and sixth letter uh, and first letter. So he will say, how day and night that I was praying that you may be able to know the grace that God has in you. And then he says that we should keep praying like this uh, when, when David the prophet says, I won't sleep even until uh, I, I am able to prepare this house for you. What is the house? Yes, not just building the temple, but also how to have the, the, the 
power of God, the presence of God in my life. As if someone says, well, my life is not really full of the Spirit. Someone was telling me the other day, yes, we feel um, even in this time when we are uh, very busy, we, we don't know how we're so busy, and it should have been a time more for reflection and more for meditation. And, but even in our own homes, and we're working from home, and we're taking care of the things that we need to in home or on work or on Zoom. But even we say, is, is our, do we feel that God is distant from us or more close? Was it a time really for reflection and for repentance and for building ourselves in a spiritual life? Or did we get more distracted in other things? Many people would say during this time, we felt a great blessing of God, more powerful uh, than and we needed this. And we can see different things, gifts that God has given us during this time that maybe we wouldn't have had uh, without it. This time is a good opportunity to pray, just like when the disciples were gathered in the upper room during the 10 days and they told them the same, don't go anywhere. Of course, it feels it's longer than 10 days. So don't leave your house and wait until the Holy Spirit comes on you so that whenever you come to leave, that you can speak, you can work, you can act with the power of God. There are special prayers that I remember one of the priests, uh, he said, if you look in the Igbeya, especially in the third hour, we know the litanies, they are focused on uh, praying for the Holy Spirit. And we have, as I mentioned, the prayers of the prostration that we say on Sunday of Pentecost, we have for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and there are some litanies from time to time that you'll find them, like even in the prostration prayers, they'll find litanies, small litanies. There was one of the priests, he's a, he's a, a very blessed priest, he collected all of these uh, and he added some to them for himself. Uh, and he gave me a copy of some of these prayers. And he would also search, like whether it's for the writings of St. Anthony, he would look for any prayers in the Holy Spirit so he could also continue in this life of prayer because not just once a year or even uh, one time a day but like St. Anthony said if we're always praying it's a fellowship of the Holy Spirit that we our life is full of the Holy Spirit um, and that even whenever we speak with our parents with our children with our friends with with strangers again how that all of our deeds and words are full of the Holy Spirit uh, Saint Ephraim the Syrian, he said, prayer draws into the soul the Holy Spirit and raises man to heaven. That, 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 the, the, every time we are praying for the Holy Spirit as if we're lifted up in a cloud to heaven. And there are many things that are mentioned. Even Saint Gregory the theologian, he has a whole sermon just on this, how to pray uh, with groanings that cannot be uttered. As mentioned, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in this way. And how that when we pray for the Holy Spirit, also this is one of the most blessed prayers that we can offer. So uh, uh, I know there's many things I didn't want to take too long because even whenever we speak of the Holy Spirit or when we think of the Holy Spirit, like it's, it's an endless work. Um, I, I want to conclude with a saying from uh, St. Anthony uh, about this prayer. And, and he likens how all of our life can be sanctified through this prayer of the Holy Spirit. He says, my, my dear children, lift up your body in which you are clothed and make it an altar and set on it all your thoughts and leave there every evil counsel before the Lord and lift up the hands of your heart to him, to the creator mind and pray to God that he may grant you this great invisible fire that it may descend from heaven and consume the altar and all that is on it and all the priests of Baal, which were, as you know, the, the sinful thoughts, the, the, the deviation that happened in the worship of God, who are contrary to the works of the enemy that may fear, flee from your face as from the face of Elijah the prophet. And then you will see a cloud like a man's head over the sea, which will bring you the spiritual rain, which is the comfort the com of the comforter spirit. I think this is the work of the fullness of the Spirit that really, that not only, yes, you'll have the tongues of fire, but as if one who is a fire. Uh, and there were many saints um, who, when they prayed, they were described like as fire. Or when, you know, the saints, when they prayed, 
and their hands became like, like fire. They saw like candles. This was just a picture to say that we our, are inflamed with the power of God that are working because especially in these days and, and all the time, like our, this, the, the darkness of the world is increasing, but also the light of the Christians and the work that we have is increasing. So may the Lord allow us to, to speak, to listen, to work, and to live with the power of his spirit. Glory be to him now and now and into the ages of all ages. Thank you, Zena. Uh, we had a quick question. How can we discern the spirits to see if it is from the Holy Spirit or something else? So it needs a practice even in the, uh, so in the practice of the um, early novices, say a, a new monk. So one of the ways the church did this for us, one of the ways, which is through uh, the confession and through spiritual guidance. So that I'm, I'm not making, especially the bigger decisions just on my own. And the role of the Father of Compassion and the spiritual guide is not just to give me orders so I follow and I don't think on the opposite. One of the main roles and say the, 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 the best guidance is how to equip you to, in, in, for you to pray as well, for you to listen as well and to practice. So that's why when a thought comes in your mind, how to distinguish between a crazy thought or this is the work of the Holy Spirit that's for, that may seem very odd, very strange. And also the work of God, or the, when, when we come to do it, it brings forth peace. It brings forth uh, unity. It's always, uh, many times there's a sacrifice that's involved. It's not selfish. So, so there are principles and guidelines that when you go by it, um, like I said, there is a... a, a a clear, it starts to be more and more clear in your life. Whereas if the opposite happens, chances are, you know, we thought it was the Holy Spirit, but it's not. Usually also the work of the Holy Spirit, it's very humble. Like when the disciples came to make the decision, they were not, not arrogant. We have the, the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it was very clear to them. <clears throat> Even they spoke humbly. St. Paul said, you know, when he was, when he was with them, he's very humble. But when they're going astray from, he would re walk. He would ride very firmly <laughs> to them to tell them, you know, this is wrong. Uh, and it's like I said, it's full of the principles of God. If it's if if we end up sometimes um, more emotional than it is, is logical, or maybe too logical and completely unemo. So there is there is a, the the way of the Lord is very balanced, and it, like I said, it produces much more fruit. The more you walk in it, the more fruitful it is. So in the beginning, there's training, but at the end, like I said, and there's also consensus. Uh, so if someone, um, uh, you know, you're coming to make a decision and you're in a meeting, so, so the Holy Spirit will work through consensus. That doesn't mean that if, if the people are praying, if the people are humble, if people are like, they're responding to the work of God, that's, that's the ideal vision of the church. That's why even in the Holy Synod or in, in, in many of the decisions of the parishes, they would say, if we didn't reach consensus, then for certain things, we can't take a decision. Maybe it needs more time. It needs more reflection. It needs more humility until we reach and able to, 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 to attain that. 